Hi Panthers, it's Mrs. Aurelia. Um, today we are going to read a book and it is called The River of Sunlight, How the Sun Moves Water Around the Earth. And it is by Molly Bang and Penny Chrisholm. And the reason that I um, chose this book for this week is because I have been um, really interested in the weather that we've been having. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've had lots of sunshine and lots of rain and it's been all over the place. And my husband and I also planted some plants this week. We made, got some tomato plants and some pepper plants. Um, and whenever we were planting them, I was thinking about all the weather that we've been getting um, and about how the water waters our plants, the rain and everything. So that inspired me to um, want to read this book to you this week. And while we're reading it, I also want you to think about the weather that we've been having and think about how plants grow um, and think about how nature does that, but also think about what your role in that um, system is as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. I'm sure you're used to this by now, how that goes. So let's go ahead and share that. So here is our book for the week, Rivers of Sunlight. I am, as always, reading this book on Sora, and this is part of a series. If you look up in this corner, it's um, the Sunlight series. There's a whole bunch of books in this series, and they all are really informative, and they teach me a lot every time I read them. So I really encourage you to look for um, the Sunlight series on Sora. You can just type that right in, and it will bring you to this series, and you can read some of the other books as well. So let's go ahead and get, start and get started. This is Rivers of Sunlight, How the Sun Moves Water Around the Earth. Love this illustration. I really love the art style in this book. So I would love for you to pay attention to that as well. I think it's really beautiful. And this is being read with permission from Scholastic Books, who is the publisher. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I am your sun. My energy warms your days. I light up your world. But of all of my planets, only one is teeming with life. Your Earth. Why? Because it is covered with water, H2O. So H2O is its chemistry name. That means that water is made of one part oxygen molecules and two part hydrogen molecules that are bonded together. That's how water is made. Um, H2O is always moving, always changing from liquid to solid to vapor and back again. So if you've ever learned about the water cycle, that's what it is talking about here. So go ahead and think back to that while you're reading this. Think about what the water cycle is and what the sun's role is in the water cycle. Together, water and I, the sun, give life to your blue planet and to you. Almost all of Earth's water is in your salty seas. So the majority of Earth's water is actually held in um, our oceans and seas that are salt water. To you, the oceans seem very deep, but they are actually just a thin, thin film covering most of your planet. Look, if all of Earth's water was rolled into a ball, the ball would only be this big compared to the whole Earth. So if the earth was this big, this was the size of earth, then all of the water on it would only be this big. That's crazy to think about because we always hear, um, I don't know if you've heard this before, but the earth is 75% um, water. So the earth's surface is 75% water, but that would only be this much compared to the whole of earth. A ball of just earth's fresh water would only be this big. So see this little ball here would be the fresh water this is all of the water, and this is all of Earth. So what does that tell us about salt water? That tells us that the majority of Earth's water is salt water. And most of the fresh water, so this water right here, is locked as solid ice or water buried way underground. What's left? Just this tiny bit of fresh water. Do you see it? That boy is pointing to it there. Just that tiny bit of water represents Earth's fresh water that we have access to. And yet, this tiny bit is enough to keep all life on land alive. How? Because water moves, it cycles. And so it is used again and again and again. I want you to take just a second to look at this page, maybe pause the video here and look at 
this diagram that it's creating in this really beautiful artistic way that's showing us this is earth this represents the size of earth the salt water the fresh water and then what is available to to um, give water to all of the life on earth just think about that and think about what you think that means pause the video if you want to let's keep going drink a glass of water feel it flow through your body most of your body is made of water. Water carries food and oxygen to every cell and helps keep your temperature just right. The water you drink stays inside you for a few days and then travels on, flushing your waste away. Just as water flows and cycles inside of you, it flows and cycles around your earth, keeping all life alive. I think that's a really beautiful thing to think about. The water that's on earth travels through our water cycle from being um, liquid water to water vapor, coming back down through rain and it freezes into ice and it does all these things traveling through. It also travels through our body just as this picture shows. We drink the water and it travels through our body system and helps flushes out the waste that's in our body just like it does for the earth. I think that's really beautiful. Where did your water come from? Where is it going? What keeps it moving? I do, your sun. I lift water from the salty seas by warming the ocean's surface waters. See how my heat makes the H2O molecules jiggle, jiggle, jiggle until they pop into the air, leaving their salt behind. That's evaporation. Liquid water becomes a gas, water vapor. The molecules of pure, fresh water float up, 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 so whenever water that's um, the salty water evaporates, it leaves the salt behind and then the fresh water goes up and spreads out. They join a cocoon of water vapor that envelopes your whole earth. The cocoon catches some of my light energy and helps earth's temperature be just right for life. So just like it maintains our body temperature, water maintains our body temperature, it also does this for Earth. Some of the water vapor rises even higher to cooler layers of the atmosphere. When a molecule of the water vapor catches a speck of dust, suddenly millions more grab hold to form one drop. Water vapor becomes a liquid once again. Drops collect in clouds. They grow larger, heavier until they pour out of the sky as rain or snow and fall back into the sea. But some of the water vapor above the sea joins a river of water vapor flying through the sky. My wind blows the river across the sky toward land. Now rain and snow fall there. Snow piles up on mountainsides each winter. In the warmth of spring, it melts and flows with fall and rain to streams, rivers, and lakes. See how some of the water seeps deep down into sand and gravel? They hold the water like a giant sponge lying on a floor of solid rock. These underground waterlogged water -log sponges are called aquifers. Aquifers are savings banks of fresh water, storing deep, still water for thousands of years. These aquifers, um, they are where our fresh water is stored and that's where it is stored. That little bit that we saw um, in the earlier slide, that is where it is stored. Above them, I keep water moving, moving. I shine my light on lakes, rivers, and soggy soil. Again, water evaporates into air. I shine my light on trees and plants, they draw up water from the ground and use my light to photosynthesize, building more plants which feed all living things on Earth. As they photosynthesize, the plants pump water into the air. It rises up to join the giant river in the sky. So the sun shines its light on plants and that causes plants, the light causes it to photosynthesize, um, which is how plants get their energy. So I want you to take a second to say that word because it's kind of a hard one. So the process in which plants create energy using sunlight and water is called photosynthesis. And whenever a plant goes through this, they are photosynthesizing. Kind of hard to say. 
My winds push the flying river, so rain and snow fall on mountains, prairies, forests, and deserts, nourishing plants there. And so water cycles round and round, over and over again. What would happen if I did not move water? There would be no rain, no rivers, no life on your blue planet if I did not move water. And I move a lot of water. Each year I evaporate a hundred quadrillion gallons of fresh water from the sea. That is such a big number, hundred quadrillion. I can't even like picture that number because it's just so large. Each year my wind blows one tenth of that fresh water, 10 quadrillion gallons over to the land. The rest falls back into the sea. But if I keep moving fresh water from the seas to land, why don't the seas get saltier and saltier? And why don't they eventually dry up? These are good questions. Because each year, the rivers of the world deliver 10 quadrillion gallons of fresh water back to the seas, replacing what was lost. So the water from the sky goes to um, the rivers and then the rivers bring water back to the seas, to the salt water. I keep water moving, cycling from sea to air to land and back again. I keep the cycle in balance. And I also cycle water in the sea. Yes, I move a giant river inside the seas. Did you know that? Just as water circulates in you to feed your, you, flush your waist, and regulate your temperature, the ocean river does the same throughout the seas. How? My light heats your Earth's equator steadily all year long, so the surface water there stays very warm. My winds help move a wide current of that warm water west until the current bounces against land, the Americas, so that's where we live, and curls back into the swirling eddies. So eddies are water that swirls and swirls and swirls in the ocean. See how the warm current changes north and then bends towards Europe? See how it changes and goes towards Europe? So this is the United States. These eddies take the water, it goes like that in a current. This is the Gulf Stream, Gulf Stream, part of the enormous ocean river. As the Gulf Stream flows, heat rises from its waters, warming the air above. My winds blow that warm air over land where it heats the land itself. If the Gulf Stream didn't flow, winters in Europe would be much colder. So that brings warm, also warm wind to Europe. As it lets go of heat, the Gulf Stream's water cools. In the far north, some of it freezes into solid ice, squeezing the salt out into the sea. Lighter than water, ice floats. See it hanging in the frigid, super salty sea? Salty water is heavier than fresh water. Cold water is heavier than warm water. Cold water holds more oxygen than warm water. So the cold, salt-heavy, oxygen-rich waters plunge and become colossal waterfalls inside the sea. So this is what they're talking about, colossal waterfalls. This is the colossal salt um, water. Two miles deep, it pummels, driving the giant river along the ocean floor. This massive artery of water is the great ocean conveyor belt. The conveyor belt snakes through the deep, dark ocean, delivering oxygen to deep sea creatures and gathering nutrients that float from above. So take some time to trace that like I'm doing. See how it snakes around. So take some time to trace how these underwater conveyor belts work. Near Antarctica, the current splits in two. So this is where it's talking about right there. Eventually, both currents rise up to the sunlit surface water, bringing the nutrients to the phytoplankton that feed all ocean life. So phytoplankton are little, little tiny um, creatures that photosynthesize in the water that are like plant life. And that is what a lot of um, ocean life eat. 
My heat warms the currents. Falling rain dilutes their salty water. Turning, flowing west, the currents join and merge at last with the Gulf Stream to begin the cycle once again. Driven by changes in salt and temperature, driven by me, your son, the great conveyor belt keeps the ocean alive and regulates Earth's temperature. Yes, my sunlight energy keeps water moving around the planet in the seas, the sky, and the land, bringing your world to life. Moving water also changes Earth's landscape. Drop by drop, water can eat into hard rock. Over eons, it carves deep canyons in the land. That's what it's doing here. As it flows over rocks, water pulls out essential minerals, nutrients, delivering them to all living things, including you. Water seeps into cracks and freezes, breaking boulders into bits, carrying the rubble down, down to the plains. Huge glaciers, glaciers are rivers of frozen water, gouge deep valleys out of towering mountains. That's what's happening here. Water is soft and yielding, but very powerful. Let's take a second to think about that. How is water powerful? How have we seen examples of water having power? For billions of years, I, your son, have cycled water around Earth as your ancestors made their homes near lakes and rivers so they would have enough water. They build great civilizations by inventing waterworks, digging wells, constructing dams, canals, and aqueducts to control the flow of water. As their populations grew, the water could feed larger and larger crops and bigger herds of animals. The total amount on your earth will always be the same. Think about that. Take a second and pause this video and think about that. The total amount of water on our earth will always be the same. But now, more than 7 billion people live on earth to the same amount of water, but more people pouring waste into rivers, lakes, and coastal waters, using and moving too much water. Some rivers are running dry. Some aquifers are being drained faster than rain can replenish them. The water balance around the world is changing. More and more places have too little water. Drought dries up the crops. More places have too much. Floods sweep over land. As your earth warms, the balance will shift even more. Sea levels will rise, swamping coastal cities. So because humans are growing and growing, we're messing up these systems that happen. And so some places are having not enough water and some places are having too much water because of the way that humans are inhabiting the planet. So I really want you to pay attention here to this page. This I promise, I, your son, will do my part to keep Earth's water clean and flowing. Will you do your part? Will you find ways to use water sparingly? So sparingly means using it really carefully, making sure that we're using only what we need um, and not overusing water. So will you do your part? Will you find ways to use water sparingly and keep it clean? Remember, you share Earth's water with everything alive and your life depends on the whole web of life. So that's the question that I want you to answer for this week. I want you to fill out a slide and answer this part of the book right here. Will you do your part? How will you use water sparingly? How will you be careful with water and make sure to keep water clean on the planet so that we can keep water moving in the system throughout Earth so that we all have the right amount? So that's what I want you to think about and what I want you to write about on your slide for this week. And I also just want you to show you that there are lots of notes um, that you should definitely go in and read and check out this book on Sora. Um, more all about water if you want to learn more about water um, as, an, as um, a molecule, more about H2O, more about how um, water moves around the planet. Lots and lots more information about that. And then there are also more about the other books that are in this series that I talked about earlier. Um, so if you want to go ahead and find that on Sora, that is where you can find it. 
So thank you so much for reading this book with me this week. I thought it was a really powerful book um, and it really got me thinking. So I hope that it gets you thinking too about how you can do your part to make sure that we all have enough water on the planet. So I hope that you have a great week and that you are finding some time to read also this week. Thanks again for reading along with me, readers. Bye.